Hey there, Nick Genethakis here. In this video, let's go over how you can drastically reduce the page load speeds of your site using a JavaScript library called TurboLinks. This is something I've been using for years now, and I think it's a really, really great library. And the really cool thing about it is it works with any web framework. So if you're using Flask, Ruby on Rails, Go, Laravel, Phoenix, or some node variant, whatever you want, uh, this is going to work because primarily all you really have to do is add this TurboLinks JavaScript library to your project, add one line of JavaScript, and for 90% of the cases, that is going to work. Uh, there's a couple little things that you may want to change around when it comes to JavaScript events, and we'll go over that in this video. But for the most part, that's how it works. Uh, there's a little bit of work to do on the back end if you want to handle form submissions as well, but that's optional. And again, you know, we'll go over that in the docs in a bit. But I think right now the best way to really go over the benefits of TurboLinks or, you know, why you might want to use it is to kind of show you maybe like a before and after of, you know, a site that uh, was using it. And then, you know, I can disable it and bring it back and we can just do a comparison. So I'm going to go to runninginproduction.com which is a podcast site that I have. You know, I've been running a podcast now for a couple of months, and this site is using TurboLinks. And the site itself is, is pretty basic from like a technical perspective. It's just a static website created with Jekyll. So right now in, on the back end, Nginx is serving all of this content, right? There's HTML files, CSS files, couple of images, JavaScript, et cetera, et cetera. It's all open source on the bottom here. You know, you can click the GitHub link and, and check it all out. But uh, yeah, this is using TurboLinks, so TurboLinks uh, will work with static sites as well. But I'm going to go to one of these podcast episodes here and take a look when I click through these episodes, right? Uh, you know, I'm clicking fairly fast, right? You know, I need to be able to look where I'm clicking, speak into the microphone at the same time. My brain's doing a lot of things. But, uh, you know, you can see when I click through these links, this feels pretty, pretty fast, right? It almost feels like the whole entire nav bar is not even moving when I click these links. And you know you can even try this out on your own if you go to runninginproduction.com. Uh, even these buttons here for the podcast players, it's like they're not even moving in the DOM, yet I'm loading completely new content for each of these links. And you know this is not like a single page application. You know This isn't like a React app or a Vue app or whatever where I'm just swapping in an area of the DOM and there's like a million lines of JavaScript dependencies and uh, application code to make this work. This is literally just HTML being served from the back end. And uh, that's kind of why the name is called TurboLinks. So it basically turbofies your links. So every time you make a uh, link click here, instead of doing a complete end-to-end -end full response back from the server, so for example, what I mean by that is like, let's say you weren't using TurboLinks. You know, if I were to go from the podcast section to the interview section or whatever, you know, you know, my web server would need to respond back with all of the HTML, you know, everything in between the HTML tags. And then the browser would need to take that response and basically parse it from top to bottom. So all of the JavaScript, all of the CSS, everything in the head document, everything in the body would be completely uh, parsed and then, you know, rendered by the browser. And there's a lot of overhead going on with that, especially if you have a decently sized like CSS or JavaScript bundle, right? Imagine if you have 100K of CSS or you know 200K of JavaScript, every single request you make, you would have to reparse all of that, uh, your browser would. And that's gonna cause all sorts of like, you know, visual changes. And, and we can emulate that here. If I go to uh, the settings here in Firefox and I disable JavaScript, and if I go back to one of these podcast episodes, you can see right away that when I transition between these links quickly, you know, there's like a visual hitch here and you can even see there's a little left to right progress bar on the tab of Firefox because it needs to load and parse everything on every request. And, uh, you know, that's that's an intensive task, especially if you're on a lower powered device, right? Because uh, you're bound by the CPU speed of whatever device you have. And uh, yeah, so, I mean, the really cool thing about TurboLinks is, you know, when it comes to things like SEO or whatever, uh, it just works out of the box because as you can see here, the page works totally fine without JavaScript. Of course, you can't play the audio because uh, this is a custom JavaScript audio player, but you know all of these pages are indexed by Google and uh, things just work. There's no like fancy separate web server that I need to run. And when JavaScript is not disabled, you know, regular user, then you know it just progresses to this really nice, you know, TurboLinks experience. And actually, if I if I bring up the uh, network tab here, 
And I filter requests for, uh, how do you do this in Firefox? I don't really use it much. Yeah, XHR requests. You can see when I click between, well, let me click the nav bar up here because we're dealing with a smaller screen. We can see here, the, you know, these filtered XHR requests. That's basically what Turbolinks is doing uh, behind the scenes. So what Turbolinks is doing is basically at a high level, it's taking all of the content inside of the body tag of uh, the HTML response, and it's just swapping the content in that body tag. So when you make a completely uh, new request to a different page, it, your browser doesn't need to reparse all of the CSS, all of the JavaScript, you know, everything in the head file, like Turbolinks will be like, look, you know, that stuff didn't change. There's no reason for me to reparse all that stuff. Let me just swap the body. And Turbolinks does some really cool things to kind of make that uh, a really seamless experience for you, the developer. Because I don't know if you're, um, you know, if you've deployed a couple of applications, you may think about things like, well, you know, what happens if my CSS or JavaScript bundles change? Does that mean, like, if someone were to click a link with Turbolinks, is it going to continue loading the old CSS? And that would be really really bad, right? Because then suddenly, you know, pages might break because they might look different because you changed the CSS. And actually, if we head back over to the Turbolinks repo, we can take a look at their docs to see how to solve that problem in a very nice way. Uh, I forgot exactly where this was in the docs. I think it was somewhere down the bottom, uh, maybe three quarters of the way down. Come on, come on, where is it, where is it, where is it? Yes, here we go. So reloading one assets change. So. You know, I've done videos about this in the past before, but it's a really good idea to MD5 hash your assets, right? So you can cache them on the back end. So Turbolinks has this idea of you just basically scatter this little uh, data attribute here onto your CSS or JavaScript bundles, right? Like data Turbolinks track reload. And Turbolinks is now smart enough to know that if this asset changed based on its MD5 hash changing, then Turbolinks will just in the background just make a full page reload when your CSS or JavaScript bundle changes instead of making a Turbolinks transition. So when you push new assets or JavaScript, things are just gonna work out of the box with Turbolinks, which is actually amazing. And uh, Turbolinks also has some really cool features here in its docs. For example, like persisting elements across page loads. I'm actually not using this in this site at all because you know this perceived speed bonus that we get with Turbolinks is me or not me, but it, it's just Turbolinks working without me having to do anything. But this permanent feature is very, very, very cool. And actually, I think if we go to changelog.com, so changelog.com is another site that does use Turbolinks and their whole entire site is open source. But what's really, really cool about this one is, and you can see here too, you know, just clicking their links on their site Everything feels really, really, really fast. And actually this is probably a better example to do like a before and after because their site is like quite large, right? They have a lot more JavaScript, a lot more CSS. Uh, you know, their backend is a Phoenix application. So it's not like just a static website, but you know, disabled JavaScript done. If I start clicking around these links, like, yeah, it just feels way slower. And it's not because I'm clicking slower. It's like the site literally can't even keep, keep up with how fast I'm clicking, but it could before with Turbolinks. But uh, yeah, okay. So back to Turbolinks enabled, I'm just gonna hit up one of these podcast episodes, whatever like their latest one is, uh, Gatsby, sure, fine, okay. Uh, I'm gonna have to also do, do, do a mute this because that's gonna be insanely loud. Uh, but what I wanted to really show here was they have this cool little audio player, right? And as I transition through their entire page, doesn't matter what page I go to, uh, you can see here that this audio player it continues to play in the background. So you can see the timer here going up. I mean, maybe it's a little small to read here, like 22 seconds, 21 seconds. So you get this like seamless experience of being able to navigate their website without the audio player ever leaving. And this is not like an advanced React application, single page application. This is all server render templates, just using uh, Phoenix templates on the back end, you know, using EEX. So if, if you happen to have like a Flask app or a Rails app or a Django app or whatever, and you just want to have server render templates, you can get that really, really nice experience. And all they did was added this data Turbolinks permanent feature to uh, their audio player. And now it permanently sticks on the page. Now, DHH is the author of Ruby on Rails. And basically, I, I believe he's the creator of this library or, you know, 
uh, one of the core folks behind it. Um, as of right now, early May 2020, there was supposed to be a huge announcement for RailsConf about TurboLink 6 coming out, which is like the next version. So there's a possibility that this library is going to get even cooler when it comes to like the granularity of what you can maybe do with TurboLinks. So maybe I'll do another video about that one in the future if it comes out. Uh, but for now, you know, this is basically what you get out of the box. You know, this is, you know, a library that's been used by a number of people here, right? 10,000 stars and it's being used in production on many applications. So it's been around the block. It's very well tested and it works quite nicely. So now maybe let's go over possibly how you can install this library on your own. Uh, and then what you might need to do to make it work with your site. So the way you can install it is, is very simple. So it depends, right? It's like if you're using something like Webpack, you can just npm install it, and then you basically just require it in your JavaScript, and then you just run this one start uh, method here, and you're done. So if I go to my code editor here, you know, this is the source code for running in production. And I go to my main JavaScript file here, which is not using Turbo or not using Webpack, by the way. So I'm using this thing called uh, Jekyll Assets, and it's you know it's all open source or whatever uh, on GitHub if you want to check it out. But the way it works is you know I just require the TurboLinks library, which is in this vendor folder. I know it's a little bit old school, not using npm here with uh, that just doesn't work with this asset manager. But you can see here, all I do is I run TurboLinks start, and that's it. There's nothing else crazy going on. Now, there is a couple of little things, though, that you will want to change in your JavaScript. So if you're used to working with jQuery, you might have like a DOM ready event, and all of your code would go into that DOM ready event. But when you're working with TurboLinks, instead of a DOM ready event, you really want to listen for the TurboLinks load event. So I have some JavaScript here that basically just, uh, you know, it just makes it a little bit easier to see a whole bunch of podcast episodes by adding like a little overflow vertical scroll bar when the list gets too long. So a little bit of JavaScript here. This has nothing to do with TurboLinks, but you can see the idea here is, you know, if I were not using TurboLinks, this would be a DOM ready event, and then my JavaScript would go in there. But instead, it's a TurboLinks load. And you can see here for the player.js, also the same deal here. You know, someone actually contributed this player, so he didn't use jQuery. This is just native JavaScript, but you can see here, same deal, TurboLinks load event. And if we go back to the docs here, maybe I can do a search for uh, navigation events or something. Yeah, it's, it's right here in the docs about, you know, where you can uh, or what type of events you can listen to, because there's a lot more than just TurboLinks load. Uh, where else? I know there's some other ones too, right? Maybe if I do a search for TurboLinks and uh, with a colon, maybe that'll find me a whole bunch of more uh, ones here. Let's see if I scroll down, down, down. No? course, it's not going to be nice on video. Oh, here we go. Full list of events, right? So their docs are actually quite nice. So there's like click and before visit and, you know, before cache and before render. All of these are very, very well documented. But for the most part, Tur TurboLinks load is the one that uh, you'll be using for regular page transitions. Now, if I go back to my code editor here and we take a look here at, where do I have Google Analytics? Yeah, there we go. So Google Analytics is really the only one that you might need to make a little uh, adjustment for. So this is pretty much the standard script tag you get back from Google when you just want to implement Google Analytics onto your page, but uh, it just doesn't work out of the box with TurboLinks. So you need to create a custom TurboLinks load event here. And then basically, you know, you gtag config page location for whatever the uh, page the person is navigating on, and this sends this over to Google Analytics. Now, you know, I'm not a huge fan of analytics, but I basically use it just to see very, very basic stats, right? It's like, is the podcast growing month over month? That's the extent. I basically look at it like once every couple of months for like five minutes. You know, I'm not doing like elaborate tracking or anything crazy like that. But, uh, you know, if you are using any type of analytics platform, you know, even if it's not Google, chances are you'll have to do a very similar strategy. But uh, really those very, very minor JavaScript changes are all you need to make TurboLinks work out of the box. Well, it's not out of the box because you need to make a couple of changes, but honestly, changing a DOM ready event to TurboLinks load, super easy. Now, you know, that really takes care of doing get requests, right? Like we're not submitting a form to click one of these links. But if you do want to submit a form, and they have some documentation about this, I think it's under, yeah, redirecting after a, uh, a form submission. So when you submit a form, you can make the form submission uh, 
Uh, well, typically, let me rewind a bit. When you're dealing with any like web backend, doesn't really matter, right? Flask, Rails, Phoenix, uh, Go, Node, Laravel, etc. Typically, after a successful form submission, you would redirect someone to whatever page that uh, makes sense, right? Like if they're creating, I don't know, a new blog post or something like that, you probably would redirect them to either maybe the page where they can, uh, you know, edit the blog post or maybe to the index page to list all the blog posts and like an admin backend. But, uh, you know, the common ground there is you would redirect after submitting the form. And there's no real way for Turbolinks just on the client side to really understand that uh, after this redirect, it needs to update the URL in the address bar of the browser. So there's a little bit of code you would want to do in the back end to make that work. So if you're using Rails, it says here, like this is already done for you automatically. Uh, you know, you can just submit uh, X, X, blah, you can just submit an XHR request. And if you're using redirect too, then it'll just do everything for you. Now, if I go to, let's see, uh, GitHub changelog.com. It's always a tricky one to Google for because changelog is such a specific thing. But if I do a search here for turbo links in this repository, so the changelog.com, you know, they're totally open source as well. And uh, I totally, totally sniped this code in my own project. But uh, the cool thing here is, you know, if you're not working with Ruby on Rails and you're working with some other framework, then you just need to add, you can see here 66 lines of code of, of Elixir code to get Turbolinks totally working with form submissions in a non-Rails application. So really what it kind of comes down to is, you know, you just need to add a little bit of code. Now, I don't want to go over all of this code because one, I don't understand it enough in enough detail to really explain it properly in like a minute because I don't want to make this like an Elixir video. But just know that for a lot of popular frameworks out there, like if you're using Django or Laravel or whatever, if you just Google around for Turbolinks and that framework name, you'll probably find something that you can use. Uh, likewise at Flask as well, although that one's a little bit outdated. Still, it basically just comes down to like, was it an XHR request and add this header to the response and you're basically done. So I understand that's like a little bit of hand wavy there, but uh, you know, if you happen to be using Phoenix, then you can always just look at this, copy paste it and it works. Or you can just not worry about form submissions and redirects and just let them be regular page transitions and that would work as well. And then all the majority of the get requests would work uh, with Turbolinks without having to do that. But yeah, I mean, I don't want to ramble too long about this video. Uh, if, you know, there's other things in the documentation we didn't go over, but if those things come up, like for example, uh, you can have like a Turbolinks progress bar just come across the top of the page. Uh, I don't know if they actually have that on their main site, if it's enabled or not, let's see. Um, yeah, no, they just have that disabled, which is fine. Uh, some pages have that. In fact, I think GitHub actually has that. So if you go to something like, uh, no, of course it's not going to show on video, even though I know I've seen that a million times, right? That little blue bar that goes across the top. And actually speaking of GitHub, um, this idea of Turbolinks, as far as I know, really originated from taking over the idea of this thing called PJAX. So if you did a Google search here for jQuery PJAX, and this is actually created by a co-founder of GitHub, uh, because GitHub uses this style of navigation all over. So you can see I'm clicking these different tabs here, and by the way, in case you didn't know, GitHub is a Ruby on Rails application. This is not doing a full page re reload for every tab click. It, it's using essentially Turbolinks, right? I mean, I don't know if they've upgraded to Turbolinks now, but PJAX is a very, very similar concept. And uh, I'm pretty sure Turbolinks evolved from that. So, you know, if you ever heard that term PJAX in your travels, just know it's basically the same thing. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this video. It's kind of an awareness of Turbolinks. I highly recommend dropping it into your site because it does make a really big difference on page load speeds, especially if you have a decent amount of CSS and JavaScript. And as we saw, if you're just doing get requests, then there's really, really not that much work to do. And on that note, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions about Turbolinks, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you plan to use it on your site, let me know, drop a link, I'll check it out. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. Please leave a thumbs up because it really helps. And I will see you in the next video.